Welcome to ATC CAD. My name is David Atkins. Today's video comes from a question asked by a student who said, I have questions about Revit phasing and design options. She said that she currently uses multiple files to create multiple design ideas for renovation projects, and she wanted to know if there was a better way. Like most questions about higher level modeling, the answer is probably. We have a one-day Revit collaboration class that covers the topic in great detail with lots of examples and exercises. It also covers work sets, monitoring linked models, and other topics useful for working with a large design team. You can find a link to that class in the description. Today, we're going to cover the basics so you can see how the two methods can work together. Here we have a Revit model for a home I lived in a few years ago. Like every place I've lived, I have a CAD model of it because, you know, I'm cool like that. So let's pretend we want to remove this window and replace it with a door. But we're not quite sure which door we want to use. This is an excellent, simple use of phases and design options. So let's get started. While I've always drawn the houses I've lived in, I admit to being a little lazy about it. Since my main purpose is usually to lay out furniture, I don't typically pay attention to what phases I'm using. The default Revit templates usually have an existing and a new construction phase already made. But if I click one of these walls and scroll down to the properties, you can see that I made everything in the new construction phase. Whoopsie. If you try to select a whole bunch of objects, you often can't change the phase of all of them at once. But since we caught it early, there's an easy trick to move everything from new to existing in just a couple of clicks. Go to the Manage tab in the ribbon and find the Phases command. What we want to do is merge everything in the new construction phase into the existing phase. To do that, we just click in the new construction phase and then select Combine with Previous. This will move all the elements to the existing phase and erase the new construction phase. Not a big deal. I'll just insert a new new construction phase after the existing phase. Done and done. I'm going to go back to the floor plan and click on the window that I want to demolish. I click on it and then go to the Properties panel and change the Phase Demolished setting to New Construction. Alternatively, I could use the Demolish command in the Modify tab. As you can see from the floor plan, it doesn't show the window being demolished. I need to set up a view for the existing phase and a view for the new construction phase. I'll start by checking the settings for the existing Level 1 plan view. It's set for existing, and I'm okay with that. Next, I want to duplicate the Level 1 view, renaming both views to indicate the phases. In newer versions of Revit, you can rename views just by clicking twice on the view, not by double-clicking, which is different. In the New Construction view, I'm going to go into the Properties of the view and set the phase to New Construction and set the Phase Filter to Show Demo plus New. This will gray out the existing work and make the demo dashed and bold. It works, but I'm never happy with how demo items are shown by default. I'd like for demo items to be red, so let's change that. Back in the Manage tab, we will start the Phases command again. In the Graphic Overrides tab, we can find the line labeled Demolished. I'll simply change the color to red for both projected and cut lines much better. For multi-phased projects, we would add new phases to the phase list and duplicate the views for each phase type. We could also split the demolished and new work into separate views if you prefer that. Now we can work on our design options. At this point in our project, we have a big gaping hole in the side of our house. But we aren't really sure what door we really want. We want to be able to test a couple of options. So let's start by defining those options. In the Manage tab, we will select the Design Options command. Options need to be nested in an Options set. Sets allow us to have different design options in different areas of our design, like if we needed three different cabinet choices and the door choices. In this case, we only use one, which we will call Door Options. Next, we need to define how many choices we want. I'm going to create one for a sliding door option and one for a French door option. Now that we've created our options, the Design Options bar becomes available for us to use. 
When the setting is main model, any changes we make will apply to, well, the main model, the whole house, if you will. But when we select sliding, the main model grays out, and anything we add will be part of the sliding option only. So with that set, let's add a sliding door. Ooh, as you can see, we get an error because we are trying to add a door to a wall that's still in the main model. Okay, we can take care of that. Up in the Manage tab, we'll switch back to our main model. We're going to click on the wall that we need for our door, and then choose the Add to Set command. This will allow us to pick which option, or in this case, multiple options, we want to move our wall into. Now we can click OK and try again. Switching to the sliding door option now shows the wall in a different color, and we can place the door like normal. Hooray! When we switch to the French door option, the sliding door disappears, and we can add our French door. And there we go. Phasing allows us to sequence our project, while design options allow us to play with different ideas. As you can see, we can easily see these design options in any view that we want. So what if later on we want to add another design option? Let's say I've decided that I really want to see what a revolving door would look like because this is my pretend project and I can have a sweet revolving door if I want. We start the same process. Go to the Manage tab and choose the Design Options command. We add a new option to our door options design set and click OK. However, we have a new problem. The wall that we want to add the revolving door to does not exist in our new revolving door option. And since the add to set command only moves items from the main model into the desired design options, we can't use that method now. Bummer. So we just need to use a different technique. Going into one of our other design options, we can click on the wall and copy it to the clipboard. Now we'll switch over to our revolving door option and paste that wall aligned to the same place. Now that the wall is there, we can try and insert the revolving door into our model. And there we go. If I go back to my walkthrough video, I can see my new revolving door, but also see that we have a window in the same location. When you copy and paste a wall, you are also copying and pasting any components that are hosted by that wall. We can simply delete the window and move on with life. Beautiful. Tell me you don't want a revolving door in your house now. Design options can be used for far more intricate things than a simple door. Entire kitchens, roof lines, and landscaping plans can be set up as design options. Home builders can use them to show two or three car garage options, upgraded appliances, custom lighting, and be able to show them to prospective buyers right in your showroom. This is covered in our one day Revit collaboration class. Find the link in the description below. Did you find this helpful? Click the like button. Do you have burning questions of your own that you'd like to see a video about? Leave a comment. Finally, if you haven't hit subscribe yet, what are you waiting for? And if you're interested in our AutoCAD, Revit, Inventor, Fusion 360, MicroStation, Civil 3D, SketchUp, or 3DS Max classes, check us out at AtkinsTechConsulting.com. As always, I'm David, and happy catting. <laughs>